morning. Let me ask, first of all, as we, you know, Thank all you. obsess over this current bear market in oil, how is it that Shell continues to do so well? Well, thank you very much for uh, the opportunity this morning. Uh, yeah, I think the company is in the middle of a, a very uh, strong and powerful financial transformation. So we have, if you look back over the last three, four quarters, we have been running at a $38 billion operating cash flow. That's at less than $50 oil. Uh, last time we did $38 billion over four quarters, oil was at $100. So how come? Well, we have been working very hard on taking out costs. We have been working very hard on high grading our portfolio. We are almost done with our $30 billion divestment and portfolio upgrading program. And of course, we have been investing in projects with very competitive break-even prices. So altogether, uh, the company, after the BG acquisition has been digested, is sort of reinvented and reinvigorated. Reinvented and reinvigorated. Ben, a very good morning to you. It's Manus in London. I'm seeing here you generated $11.3 billion in cash. That is among one of your best quarters in the past decade, which takes me then to the, the dividend. Are you at that point of where you can remove the script dividend? Um, I, I mean, this is a pretty, pretty substantial cash generation point. I think on the script dividend, we've always said, listen, we have two priorities, two things that we need to take care of. We need to take care of the equity markets. We need to take care of the debt markets. Uh, of course, we had a, an elevated debt level post the BG deal. We were close to 30% gearing. We feel we need to have line of sight to 20% gearing before we turn off the script. We're well on our way there. By the way, the gearing at the end of this quarter was just over 25%. So we are well on our way, and that's at $50 oil. Uh, we'll get her. Uh, if the oil price helps a little bit, we'll get her a bit faster. If not, we'll get her a bit later. But we will turn off the script as soon as we can. Believe me, at a 7% dividend yield, we are very motivated to turn it off as quickly as we can. And you'll you remove that if and when you hit that debt level of 20%, of just to confirm that, yep? That's, that's a proxy. We need to get to a, a set of credit metrics that is, uh, that is compelling, that sort of brings us into a, into a safe area again. And then, indeed, we focus on turning off the script and starting a, a very significant buyback program. We, we don't really want to put some sort of mechanical trigger in the market. I'm sure you will realize this is a, a matter of sort of uh, uh, judgment and prudence. But what we have so far, which I think is still a, a fair guidance, when we have line of sight to that 20% gearing level, that's the moment when you see us turn off the script. Ben, you did the blockbuster deal, of course, the $50 billion uh, BG deal. So the, the question in my mind is, A, would you ever reach out for a deal of that size and that magnitude again? Uh, not this year, I would say, but uh, joking aside, no, I think it was a good deal for us to do. Uh, first of all, much of the result that you are seeing today, of course, is on the back of that deal. We have been able to bring in some really high-quality assets with Brazil, uh, with Australia, with a lot of growth in there, but also places like uh, Kazakhstan and other areas. It has afforded us to upgrade the portfolio. It has come with a lot of growth opportunity that we are still harvesting. We are still growing our cash flow on the back of that deal as well. So altogether, it's a deal that has worked out very well. The synergies, we think by the end of the year, we're done with the synergies. The $4.5 billion that we promised in Capital Markets Day next year, we will get there by the end of that year, this year, a year early. So would I do something like this again? Absolutely. Do we have something in, 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 our, in our target at this point in time? I don't think so. At the moment, it's still about really digesting, getting the company into a very strong footing. Uh, but if we find ourselves in an opportunity to contemplate uh, something transformational again, yeah, of course, we, we have the track record to do it. Uh, and I think uh, we probably have some good opportunities coming up in the years ahead of us. Well, most deals, obviously, that you're going to do would be smaller than that anyway. Um, let me ask about the strategy call in, in the U.S., in, in the shale area there. I mean, are you looking to still sell some acreage there, or is it possible that you could go the other way and pick up some shale assets in the U.S.? Well, we never really comment specifically on any, on any deals that may be contemplating or may be rumored about. But I've been saying before two things. First of all, uh, our shale portfolio is not a bad portfolio, but it, it needs to be 
uh, high graded here and there. So we will be buying and selling small bits and pieces here and there to make it a more contiguous uh, portfolio. Uh, but at the same time, also, I do believe that in the bigger scheme of things, our shale portfolio is somewhat underweight in our overall portfolio. I'd like shale and deep water to be sort of of equal weighting so that we can enjoy the free cash flow resilience of the deep water business, but we can also uh, enjoy the capex flexibility of the uh, of the shales business. At this point in time, I would say, you know, if you have an opportunity to to deepen our positions in shale, we will take it, but we will not participate in a gold rush. You uh, you, you talk, talk to us about how you have adjusted um, to fifty dollar oil, and obviously um, for your results, it's been a really positive. Uh, a really positive process. Do you need to stay um, at this at this level, though, strategically? I mean, is fifty dollars kind of um, the new price for oil? Is that the new normal for oil? Well, first of all, how have we adjusted? Of course, again, on the back of the BG deal, helped along with it or catalyzed by it, we have been really changing uh, the the whole approach in the company, making the company completely fit for the future. So, as a result of it. We've been taking out $10 billion of operating cost uh, from 50 to 40. We're now running the company at a cost level well below the shell standalone cost levels before the BG deal. Uh, and if you look at where we have been in the last four quarters, we're actually running at $38 billion. And there's further room to take cost out. But at the same time, we've taken $20 billion of annual capital out of our investment program. So we're now running at 25 to $30 billion, and on a cash basis, even below 25. And, you know, we don't, at 25 billion, we still continue to grow the company. Uh, at the same time, we are starting up some really good projects with very low cash break-even cost, and we are investing into new opportunities with break-even prices well below the $50, below $40 in most of the times uh, going forward. So yes, the company is getting more resilient. At $50 uh, right now, I can cover the cash dividend, we can pay down the debt, uh, we can grow the company. We need to turn off the script next uh, and do but the same thing again, but I'm confident that moment will come. But, are, I mean, is $50 now the new price uh, for oil that we should be looking at, especially if such a huge company as you has already adjusted to it? Is this what the market wants to see uh, the norm at, $50? It's, it's very difficult to get good predictions on the, on the oil price, as you may imagine. A lot of it is driven by sentiment, uh, by a lot of capital being available, by sort of an intense obsession with the oil price at the moment. The fundamentals still tell us that oil prices will drift up in the next few years. Now, of course, we don't know how and when that will happen. It may also still come down because of the very sentiment. So we need to have a strategy that is resilient at oil prices in the 40s, but also can take advantage of oil prices in the 50s and the 60s. And that's what we are doing. Of course, you know, we have a healthy focus on the oil price, but definitely not an obsession. Because if you do that and yeah, you have a strategy that will only work at one oil price, you will actually be disappointed if it's something else. So focusing on a range of outcomes is the way to do it. Ben, one final thought from you. The, the, the storyboard of our news flow. UK to ban diesel cars. France is getting aggressive. Volvo's going electric. What does it mean for the CEO of one of the biggest oil companies in the world when you see that news flow? Do you want to buy uh, an electric company? Do you want to diversify? How, give me your quick take in terms of the news flow over the past 48 hours. Uh, well, the next buy I do is my next car, which will be an electric vehicle. But that's something else, of course. I think the whole move to, uh, to electrify the economy, electrify mobility in places like uh, Northwest Europe, in the US, even in China, is a good thing. I mean, we need to be uh, at... Uh, uh, at, a, at a much higher degree of electric vehicle penetration and or hydrogen vehicles or gas vehicles if you want to stay within the 2 degrees C outcome. But it won't be enough. Even if you went 100 percent electrical, even if everybody in the Western world would ban electric uh, or other things than electric vehicles, we would still see a very significant growth in, uh, in liquid mobility fuels. I think in the end, if policies really work well, if innovation really works well, I can see liquids peaking in demand in the early 30s. And maybe oil will peak a little bit earlier if there's a lot of biofuels coming into the mix as well.
But, you know, that means basically that we have to adjust for that. First of all, there is a huge opportunity in new mobility forms. Uh, you see our retail footprint changing, our ambitions there changing. You see us invest more in gas, which we think is, is a much more longer-lived uh, hydrocarbon. And you see us also go into renewables. You see us going into petrochemicals more. And we have to, in that sense, continue to reinvent the company.